on the faculty of the School of Visual Arts in New York City, and Mr. Steve Cohen, who is involved in the production of documentary films. Abe and Steve will talk to us tonight about holography, which is an exciting new futuristic type of photograph, and they brought some of their holograms, is that the correct way to say it, got to the it. studio tonight to give you a little bit of a demonstration. And even though we're working in the two-dimensional medium, I think it will be interesting to see the results of your work uh, as they might look uh, in, in 3D, even though we can't give it that. And tell, tell what this is, because I showed okay, that. Okay, we here. call that a lenticular. And uh, essentially, it's uh, there's a plastic grid, and uh, the light is diffracted as it goes through the different grid to give you the illusion of depth. It doesn't have the sort of capability that a hologram has in terms of storing information, in terms of uh, the amount of depth that is possible. And what is a hologram? Well, first of all, it's not three-dimensional photography. It's three-dimensional images made with lasers, and it's more of a combination of photography, film, physics, and sculpture, or science. But you know, it's widely called three-dimensional photography, and that's something that we're really trying to get away from, because it's a space that's unique to holography. And, and I would like to say, all right, for allowing the, uh, the laser beam to go through the studio, mm -hmm to get across that uh, some lasers are dangerous, but some are not and can be used for creative Well, purposes. this thing here, and I don't know if when we, when we, uh, when we show it, if, if the dramatic uh, impact of what it does will be visible on the television screen, but there is a photograph of a man's head that actually is replicated in space about, how do you say it's, it's, it's projecting about four inches in front of the film plane. And it looks as if you could just reach out and right. pick it up and hold it in your hand. Now, this thing that we showed at the beginning uh, that was revolving with the lady writing the word cream, right. what, how does that start? What, do you start with a photograph? You yeah. start with motion picture film. Um, there are about a thousand lines which represent frames of movie film that are on the cylinder. The subject is put on a turntable, motion picture film, the shot of the person doing whatever they would like to do in the 30 seconds that they have while the turntable revolves. Mm -hmm. And then that is transferred, it's a two-step process, frame by frame, using the laser and various optics to a piece of holographic film, which is wrapped inside the cylinder. And essentially, the uh, white light, the ordinary, it's an ordinary 100-watt light bulb, uh, causes a diffraction effect, and uh, the image can be seen to float in the center. And the, the thing that's really intriguing and important at this point in time is that most of the holograms here don't need a laser to be seen. They're viewed with ordinary white light, 69-cent mm -hmm. light bulbs. They could be used as decorative pieces. Uh, yes. You could have your picture taken uh, or anybody's picture right. taken, and they could have it hanging on their we wall. We just see in, in numerous ways of uses of uh, advertising. Advertising, point-to-purchase displays, portraits. Remember the pictures you used to see sometimes in store windows where the eyes would follow you as you walked past? Right. What was that? Uh, how, how was that done? I think that's a lenticular. Oh, it's also done in the lenticular. Right. right. Now, there are problems with these holograms, and, and we're the first ones to admit them. Um, very often you see the rainbow colors, which is the trade-off that you make in order to be able to see it with a white light bulb. The white light diffracts through the film at, at different uh, levels, and so you get different colors, just like... Uh, the old prism on the sunlit window gave you uh, any different Right, colors. the old prism on the sunlit window. Right. I remember it well. <laughs> right. You know, rather than sitting here and talking about these things, I think we ought to go over because we've got some set up and look at them and, and get into the technology of it rather than sitting here and talking about it in the abstract. So let me pause for these words from our sponsors, and then we will go to the demonstration area and see the three-dimensional photographs right after these announcements set up and uh, if we can turn this one as you are doing it uh, 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 manually then you can see that the lady writes out the words whipped cream but now watch her real carefully this is the hologram made by Anya E. Stevens okay, now real real slow there slow it down a little bit okay. and watch she actually writes whip it and that's She's whipped cream can actually it? the artist is doing the writing that's He's Anya E. in the middle right about there all right wait take take no take take I don't want to block it, it. no you can actually see it's just an empty space it's just an empty space right right the information is all on that little opaque piece of film which is around the outside of the cylinder right. how expensive a process is this to do well the <laughs> making a master is fifteen hundred dollars and from that you can go into uh, copies 
and all sorts of special effects are, are possible depending on uh, exactly what you have in mind. Mm -hmm. Now, what have we got here? I can't. I have to. You have to get in a certain okay. place that you can see. This is a hologram made by Steve Benton. Oh, that's the uh, skull. Right, Herb Minge's 2,000-year-old skull. And this hologram, even though it doesn't pick up well on television, it's very important because it's the first hologram that goes towards black and white. Right. It actually gets rid of the rainbow colors at one point, but I don't think it's picking up real well on the monitors. No, no, it is. You can see it right. over there. It looks see. fine. looks right. fine. It's just that we can't see the three-dimensional effect. Right, it's real well, difficult. The front of the face is actually forward of the, of the plane of the film a couple inches. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. This one was lent to us from the Museum of Philography just for this program. Uh, can we see the ones along the wall here? Have you got a shot of the... All right, watch the monitor here, fellas. And, well, now, this is the... Uh, oh, no, here we are. If you can see this monitor over here. Right. All right, the, the piece, the piece you, you're on now is uh, Shelley, right? Now, the significant thing about the Shelley piece is that it was the first time in this process that a, an image is taking up another uh, space in the cylinder as opposed to being right in the center of it. Initially, we... This gets a little complicated. We intended okay. to project the word forward of the cylinder, okay? Uh -huh. But it was the first time that this was done, and the word is actually at the plane of the cylinder, Next time, it will be in front of the cylinder. What you're actually seeing here is two three-dimensional images. Gotcha. One projected in front of the other. And the thing that's really important about this is that it's shot from one flat two-dimensional film to get two three-dimensional images. Looking down the road 50 years, uh, if it'll take that long, or 25 years, can this be applied to motion pictures, to television, oh. to, to, to consumer-oriented use? Well, I have to say I'm a film cameraman. If anything got me involved in holography, it was the, the concept that there would come a time when we could go to a movie theater and sit in the seats and have the image 30 feet off the screen and moving in full color in three dimensions. Mm -hmm. I and think uh, in, in three to four years, holograms will be seen all over the place. People's homes, theaters. It is uh, possible, and there are people all around the country now who are working towards actually getting it out into the hands of the public. Yeah. That's one of the reasons that we formed a business, along with Steve, the filmmaker, Myself, a photographer, we have another partner who's an optical physicist, another partner who's a research engineer, and we're all pooling our energies and what, talents. What are, who, who are your customers right now? We have a uh, full range. We had someone come in and buy one of the kisses for a wedding gift. Uh, we, we do research, do research and holographic games. But uh, how, how, how can an advertiser use this? Uh, we, we just think that advertising is perfect for holography because the hologram is so unique and so eye-catching that people just stop and look at it and never forget it. So to put it in a window or to put it in their store or have one of these holograms, we could actually put their product in the cylinder. Right. Where, then, wherever you can go with a movie camera, you can come back with a hologram. Right. So, so. Now, have we shown the laser uh, projection yet? Uh, I, I don't think so. I don't think so. Oh, but I think the camera that you're going to walk in front of is probably the one that's going to show it. Just, so. Uh, all right, duck under it and see if it's uh, if it's uh, operating properly. Uh, if I can get a look at it, uh, the lady's still writing whipped cream, isn't she? Wait, let's make her write it backwards. Watch right, this. Right, you can turn it backwards. <laughs> okay. All right, now they're setting up uh, um, the laser picture. And as I say, this is going to be a little bit difficult to see in 3D because television is a two-dimensional medium. But... Uh, if we could put the lights out behind it. There you go. Now, wait. We're, we're coming up on it here. I think I saw the tally light go on. Okay. There All right. There it is. Now, the picture is uh, projecting forward. Being projected forward, and the laser beam that we had the smoke on at the beginning of the program is the light source. Am I correct there? That's right. And uh, it is uh, bounced off of, uh, I'm going to say, a mirror. Is that right? That's right. And uh, refracted through a lens. And... Uh, the, the front the front face is actually four image four inches in front of the, the film plane. It's actually floating out there. That's correct. Spooky. Well, they, well, it is possible. They said mm -hmm. uh, they said the Polaroid camera would never work. You know what I mean? And look what happened to that, gentlemen. Thank you for coming in here and showing us these things. It is truly an exciting new effort in, in, in photography, and I promise not to refer to it as three dimensional photography again. Thank you both. We will continue and tell you about tomorrow night's program after these announcements, and I know all of you will stay with us. Thank you.